here's what happened. In the 1960s, yes. we were at war with the Soviet Union, Cold War, and a little bit of hot war over in Southeast Asia. So, we, are, we fear them because they put up Sputnik, which, by the way, people forget, was an emptied out casing of an intercontinental ballistic missile. And Sputnik it, it, it itself means fellow traveler, so it's all peaceful, but it was a, a, a ballistic missile hit without explosives. So that was a signal, and we freaked in America. So NASA got founded on the fear factor of Sputnik. All right, so we then go to the moon on the fear factor that Russia will control high ground. Then we go to the moon, space enthusiasts say, Oh, we're on the moon by 69. We'll be on Mars in another 10 years. They completely did not understand why we got to the moon in the first place. We were at war. Once we saw that Russia was not ready to land on the moon, we stopped going to the moon. That, that, that should not surprise anybody looking back on it. Meanwhile, however, that entire era galvanized the nation. Forget the war driver. It galvanized us all to dream about tomorrow, to think about the, the homes of tomorrow, cities of tomorrow. The food of tomorrow. everything was future world, future land, the world's fair. All of this was focused on enabling people to make tomorrow come. That was a that that was a cultural mindset that the space program brought upon us, and we reaped the benefits of economic growth because you had people wanting to become scientists and engineers who are the people who enable tomorrow to exist today. And even if you're not a scientist or a technologist, you will value that activity. And that, in the 21st century, are the foundations of tomorrow's economies. And without it, we might as well just slide back to the cave, because that's where we're headed right now, broke. I'm tired of saying this, but I'll have to say it again. The NASA budget is four-tenths of one penny on a tax dollar. If I held up the tax dollar and I cut horizontally into it four-tenths of 1% of its width, it doesn't even get you into the ink. So I will not accept a statement that says we can't afford it. Do you realize that the $850 billion bank bailout, that sum of money is greater than the entire 50 year running budget of NASA? And so when someone says we don't have enough money for this space probe, I'm asking, no, it's not that you don't have enough money. It's that the distribution of money that you're spending is warped in some way that you are removing the only thing that gives people something to dream about tomorrow. The, the, the home of tomorrow, the city of tomorrow, transportation of tomorrow, all that ended in the, in, in the 1970s. After we stopped going to the moon, it all ended. We stopped dreaming. And so I worry that decisions that Congress makes doesn't factor in the consequences of those decisions on tomorrow. They're playing for the quarterly report, they're playing for the next election cycle, and that is mortgaging the actual future of this nation. Tomorrow's gone. If you double NASA's budget, right now it's a half a penny on a dollar, make it a penny. Go ahead, make it a penny. Go ahead, be bold. That would be enough to go to Mars soon with people and go to, back to the moon and on to asteroids. NASA, as best as I can judge, is a force of nature like none other. And so what worries me is that if you take away the man program, a program which if you advance frontiers, you make heroes are made. There's a force operating on the educational pipeline that will stimulate the formation of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and technologists. You birth these people into society. They are the ones that make tomorrow come. A half a penny. That buys the space station, the space shuttles, all the NASA centers, the rovers, the Hubble telescope, all the astronauts, all of that. Nobody's dreaming about tomorrow anymore. The most powerful agency on the dreams of a nation is currently underfunded to do what it needs to be doing. And that's making dreams come true. How much would you pay for the universe?
Space, it's a $300 billion industry worldwide. NASA is actually a tiny percent of that. Interesting how small a percent NASA is to the total world spending of space. That little bit, however, is what inspires dreams. Every corporation in here with representatives to this conference, if you ever even touched a science mission, you lead off with that in your quarterly reports, in your annual reports. Because it inspires, it is the act of discovery that empowers nations and the world to undertake these activities. We know this. Apollo 8, that was the first time anybody ever left Earth with a destination in mind. Yeah, it figurated around the moon. Photo of Earth rising over the lunar landscape. We all know it. Earth rise over the moon. There was Earth, seen not as the map maker would have you identify it. No, the countries were not color coded with boundaries. It was seen as nature intended it to be viewed. Oceans, land, clouds. We went to the moon and we discovered Earth. I claim we discovered Earth for the first time. How does that affect culture? I got a list. The instant that photo comes out, that is the identifying cover picture of the whole Earth catalog. Thinking about Earth as a whole, not as a place where nations war, as a whole. 1970, the Comprehensive Clean Air Act is passed. Earth Day was birthed March 1970. The Environmental Protection Agency was founded in 1970. The organization Doctors Without Borders was founded in 1971. Where do you even get that phrase from? No one thought of that phrase before that photo was published. Because every globe in your classroom has countries painted on it. DDT get banned in 1972. We're still going to the moon. We're still looking back to Earth. Clean Water Act, 1971, 1972, Endangered Species Act. The catalytic converter gets put in in 1973. Unleaded gas, 1973. We're still at war in Vietnam. There's still campus unrest. Yet we found the time to start thinking about Earth. That is space operating on our culture, and you cannot even put a price on that. That is, that is a nation, that is a world reacting to a new perspective on what it is to be alive on this planet that we all share. We need to look at NASA not as a handout, but as an investment. Because as goes the health of spacefaring ambitions, so too goes the spiritual, the emotional, the intellectual, the creative, and the economic ambitions of a nation. So goes the future of America.